Hey guys, this is Thursday's video. I'm just going to do one video for today like Wednesday. I feel like that's a lot a better use of your time and mine. So for Thursday, you have three things to do. Look over Jack, page 17. This is just about citations and a citation manager. It's in preparation for your discussion number five. I've already explained discussion four in Wednesday's video, so I'm not going to waste your time and my time explaining it again here. Um, and there are other descriptions or there's more description for how to complete discussion four here. For discussion five, all you have to do is fill in by hand page 78 in Jack, or you can type up your responses and then submit your uh, responses as an attachment to this discussion. You do not need to retype the original one through five. I want you basically just to practice here. Um, if you didn't purchase Easy Writer, that's fine. I gave you a link here to Purdue OWL, and that will help you in terms of completing page 78 in Jack. So again, as always, shoot me an email if you have questions about this. Uh, you guys are doing a great job with making me aware of issues, telling me when you have questions, so keep up the good work. In this video, we are going to do basically two things. And the first thing is I want to clarify topics because I keep getting a lot of questions about topics and um, there's a lot of misunderstanding about what this paper really is, the qualitative research paper. So I'm going to spend a couple of minutes talking about that, but then the bulk of this video is going to be about annotation practice. And one of your peers already, uh, she submitted an annotation early for me to help her with. Um, so I'm doing it anonymously. Thank you to that student. You know who you are when you watch this video. So we're just kind of see the original version of that and then my comments slash feedback on her edited version. Okay. All right. For the topics. So I've been trying through email and through the discussion posts to really help you guys narrow down your focus with the qualitative research paper, as, as I've mentioned in other videos and um, what's on the assignment sheet. First off, it does not need to be an apocalyptic or dystopian themed. If it is, cool, but um, <laughs> you should do something that interests you. I've been encouraging a lot of you to study your fields, ask questions about that. All right, second thing is the qualitative research paper involves two types of research, and that's appropriate for English 102 because it is a research-based class, more so than 101. All right, so for the qualitative research paper, the first type of research is secondary source research. That's all of the things that you're collecting for the annotated bib, which is due on Friday um, before midnight. What this means is the five sources that you're looking up, those have to do with your topic, but not necessarily answer your research question. They are basically informing your understanding of your research question. Then we'll get to proposal and port midterm portfolio. Your proposal will also have to do with your topic. This is where you'll say, hey, I've done all this research. Now I want to narrow my topic down to this, okay? And then the third thing, or the third part of this larger project is the qualitative research paper itself. So the first type of research, like I mentioned, is secondary source research. The second type of research is primary source research and I'm realizing now I should probably should have reversed them when I presented them to you just now anyway primary source research includes any type of research you as a scholar or researcher or whatever you collect yourself so that can include observations interview field notes field data um, surveys and I'm sure there's some that I'm missing, but those are the main things that come to mind. In this class, for the qualitative research paper, your findings section, which again looks like this, findings or results, that is going to be full of survey data, primary research data, all right? Your secondary source data, which is again the annotated bib stuff, um, that goes in the introduction and or the discussion section okay so why i'm telling you to change some of your topics or why i'm dissuading you from adhering to specific topics um, a couple of examples and these are great ideas and these are great topics i'm not saying that um, you guys are not coming up with good information i'm just saying they're not necessarily suitable for a qualitative research paper for example one student wanted to write about i believe gene editing 
Um, another student wanted to write about the death penalty, and one student wanted to write about music festivals. So all of these are excellent topics for research papers, just not specifically a qualitative research paper. The reason is because of this primary source data collection. Imagine asking your peers in an 8 to 10 question survey, which you'll create later, don't worry anything about that now, um, imagine asking them about these very specific topics. You're assuming that the audience, aka the 15 other people plus you in this class, have enough knowledge to contribute um, like in an educated way toward your topic. So for me, I have very little knowledge about gene editing. I couldn't really fill out this survey with offering anything useful. The death penalty, I have a lot more knowledge about because I took this prison lit class and wrote the paper about solitary confinement, but the, the death penalty as well as like euthanasia, abortion, gun rights, all of that, these topics are far too big typically um, to write an intelligible qualitative research paper about them. Keep in mind, for my solitary confinement paper, it took me about 16 full weeks of me traveling to Hazleton Prison, um, watching Prison Break, watching Oz, collecting data, distributing surveys online. It took me about 16 weeks in a graduate level class to complete all of that. So I'm trying, the reason I'm trying not to be discouraging, but I'm trying to be realistic in terms of what everyone can accomplish in the span of four weeks, which is really all you get for this entire project. And then you have two weeks toward the end for your op-ed and the final portfolio. Okay, so please um, don't take it as like a hit on your character or anything. I'm just, again, trying to make sure that your peers have enough knowledge about your topic so they can contribute to your survey in a knowledgeable way. All right, that's my whole spiel about topics and what we're working up toward in the, the qualitative research paper. Another, the second thing we'll talk about in this video is again, one of your peers submitted to me her original draft of this source um, and I'm going to show you t three things. I'm for, we're first going to go to the website and then I'm going to show you um, what uh, she presented originally and then what I edited it into. So the first thing I notice when I come to this um, when I come to this annotation is just to single space this, double space the citation, and um, the citation has a lot of little things that we need to fix with it, but we're going to get the, to those in a second. The biggest thing I've noticed here is that she has searched on theguardian.com. The Guardian is pretty credible rather than some other websites, but I'm noticing it is a .com. In part of your Jack reading from Wednesday, um, it has a nice breakdown of .com, .edu, .gov, .org, .net. All of these I'm limiting in your annotated bib. You have to have five to seven total sources. I'm going to say two of them can only be from websites, all right? So like .coms, .org, .gov, only two. The reason is not only do I want you to um, try to use the databases so you get um, more experience in this class as a, an instructor who I'm pretty hands-on, so I want you to, to learn a lot in this class. I want to make sure you leave this class with the knowledge of how to use the databases. But also, what a lot of what I do in the videos should reflect the work that you guys are producing. So since we've spent a good amount of time talking about the databases and showing you how to access them, I expect you to use them in your annotated bibliography. And the last thing, and probably the most important thing, is um, you're going to be relative experts on this topic by the time um, you produce your qualitative research paper. So you, enough so that you can talk about it comfortably, all right? So it's, again, it's not going to be 16 weeks or a lifetime worth of knowledge. However, most of that knowledge cannot come strictly from .coms or .orgs or .govs. Okay, so um, get into the academic research, get into the scholarship, and that will really help boost your ethos when you're writing. So the next big thing is here is her edited version. So she did, it, there's a lot of purple on the page. There are a lot of comments. She did a great job. This is, this is very um, early in the week, very early in the class. Okay, so um, let's just look at the citation itself and then we'll get into the body of the text. So here, 
Uh, like I said, I would go to the website, I would look for the correct title, author, date, um, publisher, etc. Okay. And what I would do, this one I actually read, but when we get into the thick of the semester, I won't be able to read everything. So I am going to glance over the introduction and the conclusion to just get a sense of the argument that the article is presenting. Um, one reason why I do this is not because I'm a crazy lady who has no time on her hands, but it's because I want to prepare you guys for future classes where um, their policies on plagiarism or their policies on annotated bib, research, whatever it may be, where their policies are less forgiving than mine, where they may not have a portfolio-based system. So a lot of my students last semester, and even the semester before, and a lot of my ESL students, they unintentionally plagiarize. And um, with the portfolio system, I can kind of catch that early and the student can revise so that that doesn't make it into the final portfolio yielding a zero for the course. That would be obviously the worst case scenario for <laughs> this course. That's why, um, I pay so much attention to what you're researching, where you're researching it, um, and that, making sure you're direct quoting rather than accidentally plagiarizing. Okay, so that's the first thing I notice. Um, anytime you have the medium of access, delete that. That's seventh edition. I don't need your access date. We don't need HTTPS. All of this is in, um, it's on Purdue OWL and it's also on um, Easy Writer. And the name Greg Thumb keeps coming up because I did this on my work computer um, today. So, yes, capitalize these here. It's quote the important words, um, and then I added a period. So all of this, all these details, just do your best to start out with them. Um, I get really impressed when students can do these perfectly the the first, second, third, fifth, eighth time. Because uh, I know it's it's complicated, but I think this formula for how to do a citation is kind of the closest thing to, to math <laughs> that uh, English 102 gets. So just do your best. I'm here to help you all semester. Okay. Um, what I did here mainly, so again, there are three parts: summary, evaluation, connection. The thing that this student did not so well, and what I commented on most, and a lot of this purple comes from an O. A, an abundance of summer, summary. So a lot of times students are pushed to write too many words and I think that uh, a lot of an exercise in brevity is useful. Um, so let's just look at some of this. So Clement who has interviewed many models explains how eating disorders are becoming so common. So a lot of the purple is all of the purple is what I added, deleted, etc. And it appears anorexia is a rising problem within our society. So stuff like this I cut because it's obvious. Um, anorexia has been in the news enough or ha we are aware of it maybe personally or through a friend, through movies, etc. Um, we can delete something like our society is, is too vague. So I just deleted that. This health condition runs deep within people of all types, but more specifically within models. So we have models here. I just added models up here so I could delete this sentence. So all of this is now just these couple of words, okay? Um, because again, the reason why I'm being strict on the summary part is students are notorious for summarizing well. However, it becomes repetitive and um, I'm gonna really push you guys to be concise with your writing to make words count essentially because I'm not assigning, like your proposal is only 250 to 300 words. Those words need to matter, okay? Um, all right, so that's pretty much for summary. Evaluation, this paper didn't have, or this um, source didn't have any evaluation yet. So what I mean by evaluation, and this is the hardest one that students often skipped, is it credible? Is it biased? Does the source have an authority on this topic? How might the article be different from Vogue.com if Vogue.com published it or rather than The Guardian? And the last thing is connection. So this student actually did connection really well. She said, it helps me conclude that some models suffer from an eating disorder, yet it's not always apparent to the people around them. Strengthens my research in showing what kind of toll these dis the, this disease can take on victims' bodies and mental states. Okay, so like I pretty much mentioned all of these things in 
my comments just now, but hopefully this gives you a better understanding of what I'm expecting for the annotated bibliography, and please let me know if you still have questions.